what you see on the screen is this is a, a work style framework. And each one of these quadrants represents a work style and an understanding. And by understanding your team's strengths, as well as potential opportunities, the leader of this organization is going to be much uh, better uh, prepared to address those conflicts, especially as it uh, as it arrives or as it aligns to the objective that they're trying to achieve. And, you know, Matt, I'd love to hear your thoughts when you see an exploring team. What sticks out to you? What are some of the things that really pop off on the paper for you? Yeah, I think what you see on a team like this is we would describe it as as uh, pretty balanced in the sense that there's people in each of the quadrants that doesn't always happen. Uh, and, and it gives you a lot of variety, which is a good thing because it makes the team very flexible. But at the same time, it's a, a challenging team if, when you're the team leader because you have to recognize there's lots of different personality types and therefore lots of different needs that have to be met. Because you have a concentration around innovation and agility, if you think about the collective of the team, it's going to tend to be a team that wants to go fast. They're going to want to change, you know, dynamic, all the reasons that you, that you talked about. Well, what's the implications of when we act that way for people who are in orange in this quadrant that are like, yeah, that kind of sounds like me sometimes. But what about if you're SH in the bottom left, you're like, that almost never sounds like me. I feel like I'm the caboose. Everybody's driving away from me all the time. Don't they recognize my strengths here? What I can do on this team? And my recommendation for somebody in that position is, you know, balance, but don't block. Find a way to highlight those uh, the opposite of those overused strengths, bring up the details that are going to drive us into a ditch if we don't acknowledge them. But don't try to slow the train down so much that you frustrate you know, the team when they need to make change happen. So you got to find that sweet spot. My advice to the leaders in an innovation agility quadrant like this is to look at that person and celebrate their role on the team. Make them feel special as that balancer of saying, I'm so glad you're here to prevent us from being maniacs and like causing all these problems. Nobody knows the customer details or the back end of that process or working with that bank. Nobody can do this like you do. Thank God you're here to help us, you know, and, and play such a critical role on the team. Every team member plays a very specific role but do we celebrate them or do we just pretend they're not here? Do we just steamroll them every time? That's not a recipe for success because if that person leaves, there's no way to fill that job role. That's going to be a disaster. Yeah. And I think what's interesting is, you know, if we go to the next slide, you'll, you'll see, and this is we've leveraged this off of a lot of our data, is there are strategies that are involved in digital uh, in the digital transformation. And if you look at the strategy that's involved in a digital transformation, it's that of a of a uh, of a pathfinding strategy. And what you'll see is in this pathfinding strategy is there's going to be, you know, some areas where we're going to be really heavy. Right. But there's also going to be areas where we have some potential blind spots and mapping out the work to be done in results and discipline and process and precision are going to be as important as the vision of the project. Right. And which would live in the innovation and agility. And, you know, I think, Brian, you mentioned this in some of our conversations. Matt, you've mentioned this aligning the work to be done with the people that are best positioned to do that work is the number one role in a successful transformation. Brian, would you agree with that? I would, and I'm gonna have to jump off unexpectedly, but yes. I, don't, I don't know these, these you know, the, the first and last names or who these people are in this team dynamic, but I can tell you by looking at this, uh, these quadrants, what I would do is if I'm having a conversation with anything as we're laying it out, I'm gonna look at SH in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm gonna say, what are we missing? What are we not thinking about? What, I, this sounds like a great plan, where what you know how could this go wrong or i'm gonna ask hm so what what blind spots are we not seeing because there's i know it sounds great and it's lollipops rainbows and unicorns what could go wrong if we do this what how what could get disrupted along the way and i'm going to value their opinions especially then i'm going to ask co and how are we going to guard this process what are the uh the accountability measures that are going to be put into place and how do we guard this process and, and and before i jump off i'm going to transition with uh troy tidwell was was commenting on uh digital transactions there is a, a and this ties right into this we won't we only do about we can do a whole deal from you know end to end 100 digital but the customers don't necessarily want to do that no differently than buying uh airpods or an iPad at Apple, maybe you do you buy it online, you go pick it up or you, you look at it and then you do end up getting it home shipped. They don't care how it happens. End to end, we do 5% of our transactions today. 
I think I see that number going up maybe 10%, but it's really not what consumers want. And I, it's very challenging to get to that end to end hundred percent digital transaction and getting everybody bought in. And unless you fix these things that we're talking about on these quadrants, you won't get there. Just be, you know, like they're saying, boat anchors dragging the boat and you won't be able to move. But once you get that done, now it's a matter of getting everybody to keep doing it because they're bought into it, not because of what the customer really wants versus what they want or what's going to make their job easier.